Hi, this is Richard Tran with WCI Consulting. Today we're going to go over some tips and tricks that uh, have come up in Business Objects 4.0 Information Design Tool. The Information Design Tool is the new universe design tool for Business Objects 4.0. It's got a quite a new look from the original universe design tool so people kind of ask a lot of questions with, with regarding how to do this and how to do that and some of the common things that we've come across so the first thing that I'd like to do is I'll go ahead and I have it already open here and I want to show you you know one of the first things you have to do is create a local project and within that local project that's how you create all your objects to create the universe that you're going to be using so Right now I currently have one called test that I that we're going to use. So I created a test project. Within that test project you actually have to right click on that project to do things. So within this project you need three different types of files to actually create a universe file. That universe file will be compiled and, and published as a UNX file. The UNX file is actually composed of a data foundation layer which is a DFX file a BLX file, which is a business layer file, and a connection string, which is a secure connection string that's already been created and been given access rights from your administrator. One of the main things with the information design tool that people continue to ask about is the multi-source option. Now, the only time you can actually create a multi-source universe is upon the creation of your data foundation layer. So if here we show we create a data foundation layer, we're going to call this test one, two, three. It'll give us the option of a single source or multi-source. Once you select a single source, you will no longer have the option to go back to create a multi-source. You'd have to start over. Uh, you cannot also convert a UNX file, which is the old universe file, to a multi-source file. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that since we already have a, a kind of working version here. So I've already created a data foundation layer. A data foundation layer has the tables and whatnot that we are going to use for our business layer. Now if you want to know more about what the data foundation layer is and the business layer is, you can watch another video that we have posted in how to create a universe and information design tool here. So I'm going to talk about more of some of the tricks and tips that we've learned. So we've covered that. So another issue that we come across is people want to know where the limits that you can set on your queries because in Universe Design Tool, the UDT tool, it's quite different. So in IDT, you actually go into the business layer file and you should be able to see all your properties here on your query options. You'll see the limit size set to 5,000 rows and your execution time. This is where you set these options instead of, I believe, in the UDT was on the, the, the actual connection side. So another issue with the connection, speaking of connections, is a lot of issues that we are seeing with the connection is that the connection itself is getting corrupted. So what we would do here is what we would just, a lot of issues with the connection, we'll just delete the connection, which will actually tell us that we have other layers infected impacted by the deleting of that connection and it's telling us it's connected to the test so we'll go ahead and delete it knowing that it's tied to the data foundation so we'll go down here and go to our connections that are published and create a new relational shortcut and put it back in our project that we created earlier at this point we go into the data foundation and we'll repoint data foundation or we'll repoint the connection to the new data foundation here and we have, you can actually add it and recheck it right here. So that's how you change the repoint the data foundation to the new connection that you've added back to your project. Another issue that we've seen with connections is that for the IDT tool, the IDT tool uses the 32-bit driver. However, the server itself needs a 64-bit driver. So a lot of times people install the drivers, they forget to include the 64-bit driver. So when you do a server install, make sure you update the drivers on the 64-bit side and the 32-bit side. If you have a local client, a local client would need the 32-bit. 
That is a common issue that we've seen multiple times that people fail to realize that there is a 32-bit file, and a 32-bit and a 64-bit driver that need to be installed. So that is one of our top issues actually right there. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on though. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to contact us and we can help you later. Another thing that we'll talk about here is the, the use of families within the IDT tool. So within the use of families here, we can create our own families by color coding and different names. So I've actually created a test folder and I can add different families to this and add different colors. And we create families for multiple reasons. Say you have an alias table and you want your data to be that's related to your alias tables to be in this color, you could possibly just select that family and any tables with that color are associated with that alias per table. And another thing here is uh, I've seen is you, different developers, if you have multiple developers for your information design tool, maybe each developer could color code uh, their tables that they've added and, and, and things like that nature. One other thing I've also noticed is the, the use of families can also be used for, you know, if there's a stock data foundation that was given to you provided as such like a custom adding of just custom tables that you could add, you could make those different color coded as well. Another thing is when we start to drag and you start to add multiple tables here, the preferences that we set are actually up in the Windows Preferences. And here, we can change some preferences for the Information Design Tool, as such as the check integrity, which if we wanted to default to check the connection tables and joins, we go ahead and do so here. I don't really want to change anything at this time. But you also have the, uh, the appearance. You could show your different data foundation types and where the tables and, and the names and things like that. Another thing is printing. You have different options for printing and you have the data foundation joins that you can set in here to dis distinguish the line types so you can have them the sharp edges. So these are just some of the things that we've encountered in our experience here at WCI that some of the common issues have come across and you know some of the tips that, that are help you get to where you're going within your organization. So that concludes our quick video on information design tools, tips and tricks. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at wciconsulting.com. Thank you.